Uh, thanks for the introduction, by the way. That's uh, that, that was lovely, I have to say. Um, and a, a view of the future. I'm, I'm not. It, it's kind of interesting, actually. Dan and myself were chatting briefly after the session this morning, and maybe it was the fact that it was four o'clock in the morning for us when we were on the on the Asian and Australian time scale. But we're not quite sure that we talk much about the future, actually, to be honest. So we'll try and perhaps focus a little bit more on on some of the key trends and issues that are facing us going forward for this one. So uh, anyway, I, Dan, I, 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 I'm are you happy I just kick off a little bit and ramble and then talk to you? Yeah, let's ramble. Um, a, a view of the future, and I guess where do the where does the answers book fit into all of this? Um, I think it's quite clear that one of the most important things that is facing our industry at the moment, and one an area where we have to place increasing emphasis is on the maintenance of our role as a profession. I think there are many challenges that are coming to the industry, whether it's in terms of data sources, whether it's in terms of uh, methodologies, either for collecting or analyzing information, whether it's the advent of the data scientist, as I hear so many people talk about these days. But I think it's clear that there are in an increasing number of challenges to the traditional status of market research. And within that context, therefore, our ability to act as um, impartial and objective assessors of data, utilizers of data, and presenters of data becomes increasingly important. Founded on standards, uh, quality, guidelines, etc., etc. And in that context, I think the answers book hopefully is a, a, a small step to providing the youth of today coming into the industry or indeed you know maybe maybe not so youth maybe just coming into the industry for the first time with an with an easier guideline with a first step to answering some of the key questions that will allow us all hopefully to to establish and to maintain that professional status uh, Dan yeah I completely agree and uh, I think the challenge for us, as we talked about earlier, is to try and ensure that everything that we're doing today is really critical to positioning us for making the future as, as good as it feels like it should be with all the amazing opportunities we have at the moment and all the conversations that we're in throughout the value chain on a global basis. And I think, you know, as you said, the, the fact that we're creating these kind of publications and promoting them, not just through this forum, but through a range of other initiatives, you know, that's, I think that's a good start. It's positioning us in the right kind of place to really put us in a position where we can celebrate everything we do. And I think that's probably one of the, you know, the, the points that's also important to note. Uh, the Answers book is not by any stretch of the imagination intended to be, you know, the comprehensive answer to everyone's first questions about market research. On the contrary, I, I think it's a, it's a first step on a journey and uh, I know Ray, we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the chapters that are already in the book, some of the chapters that will be coming into the book over the course of the coming 12 months. Um, but as I said earlier, I, I hope it becomes maybe, you know, a kind of almost like a market research for dummies type book that's perhaps doing some of the our colleagues in injustice but it, it is hopefully going to be a source of reference that will allow us to to identify and to differentiate ourselves from from a lot of the stuff that's being done out there today in the name of market research and that may not necessarily be so I, yeah, I reference the, sorry go ahead the, the, the other important thing that has been mentioned a few times at some events that those people who have had the chance to have a sneak preview of the certain chapters or have read the book in its entirety it is good that it's a uh, market research for dummies, but it's also good for those of us who have been in the industry for a while to remind ourselves of what the you know what the contemporary answer is to some of these questions that we've perhaps taken for granted a little bit. And you know, when we're out at conferences or we're, we're talking to clients or others, so what I said around the, the strong discipline of research, and it's uh, it's. This book is great. It's written in such a way that it reinforces all those things that perhaps we haven't really taken the time to think about because we take it for granted for some time. That's a good point, Dan. And I think the you know as we mentioned this morning too, one of the great phrases that's 
perhaps overutilized at the moment uh, is is that of big data and while in many cases in many cases it's used as a scare tactic or as a big stick to say you know market research is on its last legs it's the death knell of market research because there's so much information out there and um, you know who actually has the skills to do it uh, who can actually handle the amount of data who can analyze the data what software can do it I think in in that context I well, it, it is my personal opinion, I think Dan, it's yours and Kansas too, that market research still is you know, the, the best industry to deal with that. The, the people who work in the industry have the best training for it, have a grounding in establishing what are the parameters of the business issue, what are the relevant data types that need to be utilized or indeed ignored, whatever the case may be, have a good understanding of what the provenance of data is. After all, as somebody said to me the other day, uh, and they were chatting about a recent campaign that they'd run, they proudly told me that they had five million likes on Facebook. And I said, well, that's fantastic, but I'm not sure it's a representative sample. And those kinds of issues that are coming up around social media and all other kinds of information, the, the gatekeeping of, I guess, the relevance and the pertinence of that will very much be, I think, the focus of where our industry needs to um, pay more attention over the coming 12 to 36 months and at the risk of repeating myself, to underline and to underscore that, that professionalism with, with which I think you know, all data becomes largely useless. What was that great phrase, Dan, that, that Kasparov used at Congress? He said something like, uh, you know, computers are useless, they only give you answers. Yeah. You have to ask the right question at the same time. The, too. the main phrase I remember Kasparov saying in the context of when we spent some time with him was checkmate, and then the next time we tried to play, checkmate again. There's no way we stood any chance against him. But it was great to spend some time with him and hear, hear his perspective on things like innovation and the challenges, and the, I think the opportunities that someone with a brain that's out of his, the way he describes where where we fit within the kind of the broad business landscape and really how, how well positioned you know, we are to, to add value, particularly in light of all these changes that are going on. And I was speaking at an event in Europe uh, recently, and one of the, one of the countries that's had quite a, been quite negatively affected by the global recession. And there, what came out very strongly from the debate was perhaps a big way for us to move forward is, as you said, Finn, to really champion this uh, gatekeeper concept because all of our industry's clients and all of the issues that we're facing require somebody to perhaps take the higher ground, you know, to, to own some of the best practice and provide the leadership and direction through some of these really big challenges that you have identified, such as big data, social, mobile, all these things. We have clients that are used to buying a certain type of research that are now wrestling with answering the, the same or evolved business questions, but they need guidance on really how all of these these big new concepts fit into what they've what uh, how they now have to answer these kind of problems that perhaps the same business questions but the way we're looking to answer them is very different than the way we have them before. Hi Dan and Finn, we've got a, a question come in here from Mike. It might be a good time to take uh, some of the questions. If you have got any questions, anybody else, please type them quickly. Otherwise, we will have moved on. Um, what is the industry doing to communicate that it is extraordinarily well positioned to make sense of big data? I agree with the sentiment of what Finn and Dan are saying, but I don't see much in the way of self-promotion for the research industry. Um, well, great question, firstly, and I think um, a slightly long-winded answer, uh, Mike, is that one of the things that we did want to try and establish initially were what were people's expectations when you know when the phrase big data was happily rolled out either from a from a supplier or a buyer side what were the expectations on either side as to you know what should necessarily that discussion encompass and we were we were very fortunate to have a number of people attend a couple of symposia in Boston earlier this year and in Amsterdam a couple of weeks back to to try and, and pin down if you like that definition or those parameters and I think it became quite clear from those sessions that the gatekeeper concept was one of of paramount importance and we had 
a number of fantastic contributions, not just from uh, the agency side, but also from the client and the user side, that where I think there was a general meeting of minds to say, hmm, while we have always been talking about big data and the threat that it, proposed, that, that it potentially poses, actually the opportunity there is probably much larger than necessarily the threat. So what have we been doing? Probably not as much as we ought to have been doing, but I think that in, uh, in contrast, there is a much wider acceptance now that that gatekeeper role is a territory that we ought to be staking out for ourselves and one that certainly we will be trying very hard to frame and to, to encompass going forward. Of course, however, we, you know, uh, we can't do that job on our own and we need, we're going to need the help of national associations, of client-side companies and indeed for of the other agencies to try and ensure that we that we frame that and support it properly. I think I'll answer that as well, Finn, is that what, what we're doing is by providing the forum for that kind of debate and facilitating the discussion, you know, let's remember that we've got at least 5,000 people who are, who are members of SMR plus the broad reach that SMR provides. They're all debating and wrestling with this. And so this is like some super bulletin board discussion that's going on over a period of time with all sorts of different contexts being provided. So the fact that we're getting close to some consensus I think is fantastic and now the challenge for us is coming out coming out of this year and going into next year to really make sure that we are pushing this with one voice much more than we perhaps have been over the last 12 months or so. We've got uh, another question here and we've got people online from Asia, Europe, America. So it's quite a, a nicely timed question. What are SMR's? What is SMR's vision of working together with local organisations over the next year or two? Um, well, I think the shortest answer I can give to that is absolutely essential. The or any of the you know any of the work that we're conducting, uh, just to take the big data example again, any of the discussions that we're trying to facilitate at whatever level, be it local, regional or, or global, can only truly be implemented if, you know, if we're all working together uh, with one common aim and goal in mind and uh, with, without the help and the collaboration and the support of national associations, I think we as an industry uh, won't necessarily be able to, to frame and support the positioning that we wish to take. So the short answer is absolutely essential. <laughs> 